Right. So let me um so uh, welcome you all for the second session of the of the marketing management program mm, before i uh, get to the uh, topic uh, i have shared this uh, lecture schedule with you all have you got it can you see it hello hello well can see i hope if not, you can uh, uh, always uh, interrupt me and uh, ask. And uh, I want you all to participate in this discussion whenever, whenever necessary. Don't hesitate to ask questions. Any questions is valid. Not a single question is a stupid question because it's a learning session. Because if it is an offline class, uh, I can ask questions from you all one to one. But uh, one disadvantage of this online method is uh, I can't see you all and I can't see your faces and I can't direct at uh, anyone. Um, but there are advantages also in this uh, program. I uh, believe they are that uh, your focus on the course will be uh, very, very, uh, very, very strong because no distractions. You won't see anybody else other than the, the lecture and the presentation. Uh, and also we will uh, stick to uh, one hour uh, one hour uh, intervals one hour breaks sorry one hour sessions and 10 minutes break so we started at uh, 1 30 now uh, and we'll give a first break at 2 30 for 10 minutes and 3 30 another 10 minutes and 4 30 another 4 10, 15 minutes or so and that's how we will go. And uh, last week we uh, did the introduction to marketing and marketing management. Uh, today and uh, next week could be on the marketing management process. Uh, as we go, and I have shared the tute already with you, tute number two on this. And uh, I have included a question and answer and discussion session after every three uh, sessions, as you see. So there will be uh, a question and answer. Maybe not the written question and answer. I will be asking some questions. You can ask some questions and we discuss, summarize, recap, uh, clear any uh, uh, unclear areas and so on. We can go on like that because it's very important that you understand the concepts and the discussion points uh, in, the, uh, in, in uh, writing the final exam. So, uh then going back to uh, uh next a few sessions like after q and a session uh, on the 7th February, the three modules been done uh is on the customer or consumer or the business and uh, their buyer as buyer their behaviors and then segmentation and targeting and positioning then we come to marketing mix elements like product strategy pricing strategies and distribution or channel strategies and again we'll have a question session on the uh, 7th uh, march uh, and discussion and summarize what we have learned you all can ask you can get ready with answer uh, questions if you have any and then uh, there will be another two sessions in March, one on uh, marketing communication or our promotion strategies, and then service marketing uh, strategies, which will cover the people element, the processes, and the physical evidence aspects uh, in the marketing mix. And then we'll, there will be two sessions on uh, again, we'll discuss uh, some points on the exams and so on. So that's how uh, the uh, sessions are going to be. I hope you are clear on that. And then coming back to what we did uh, last uh, week. Uh, tip number one, that's uh, what we did there was uh, 
uh, we try to understand the marketing concepts and marketing definitions and what is marketing management and what are the steps in all in marketing management and um, uh, then extended marketing mix which includes uh, seven P's from product price place uh, promotion to people processes and uh, physical evidence then uh, various marketing management philosophies from production concept to product concept selling marketing concept and soci societal marketing concept mm, and uh, to uh, uh, some topics uh, like uh, digital marketing uh, and uh, yes so um, before getting into the uh, second session and another question uh, i want to ask you now we shared a, a story also last week about customer relationship management mm, i hope you uh, mm, like that story because uh, it, it covers a lot of concepts that we are going to learn in this subject or in this module. And uh, it's very interesting and, and uh, how a company or a branch of a, a marketing company practices marketing in real life. Uh, they are, how they are using their, the knowledge on the customer, knowledge on the customer behavior, segmentation uh, strategy and uh, then how they manage their marketing mix elements uh, starting from uh, what we have uh, already known the product price how they manage product how they uh, manage their pricing the distribution the promotion strategy the, the people, the staff involved, the processes that was used to deliver service to the customer uh, and the physical evidence, the what the customers see in tangible form and so on. So, uh, do you have any uh, questions before we get into the today's topic or you? If you don't have question, I can ask you some question. Questions rather. So can someone tell me what is marketing definition that we that I said we are going to use in the in the in the in the sessions to come in in the weeks to come? What is uh, marketing or the most accepted marketing definition? Can anyone give a start? Hello? I said that there were several marketing definitions, but one I said is most appropriate and uh, more relevant and which, which we'll be using in these sessions as we go. Hello? What are the definition that uh, that I said is going to be very useful for our program? And remember, um, one thing I have to tell you. Uh, you know, this uh, when you learn this uh, subject of marketing, you can uh, learn it uh, as someone who wants to teach marketing in a later stage actually that is how i studied marketing you know it has a lot of advantages because then you will uh, will uh, clear all the doubts that you are going to come across when you study for example now if you want to teach marketing to somebody else oh, how how do you do it because without uh, without having a good knowledge about the concepts or the marketing processes 
you will not be able to teach it to anybody. So that's why I said, whenever I tell you some something in this session, uh, make a note of it, keep a notebook with you, and examples that I give, keep a record because you won't, you won't be uh, remembering it as you go. So these are the uh, things that uh, you should be doing because uh, uh, when you when you learn a subject with the view of teaching it back again to someone, then you will learn it uh, very very carefully and with interest. So. I am, I am requesting all of you to do that in that way because that's going to help you in, in abundance because uh, actually when I studied marketing a long time before, I had I had an intention to teach it to somebody someday. And even when I studied uh, for IBSL program, the other subjects in the IBSL, uh, the AIB program, I did it with the intention of teaching it later on at the IBSL itself. So if you have that kind of uh, uh, objective, then you tend to learn very carefully and with interest and uh, very comprehensively as well. So my advice, maybe you all, all of you won't, uh, don't want to become lecturers in, uh, in the years to come. Uh, even uh, even if it is not so, but still think uh, think this learning as if you want to uh, understand it, and at least you can tell it to your staff, the, the your team. When you have your marketing management knowledge well within you, then it's very easy for you as a manager to drive your team, manage your team, or teach them and uh, succeed. So therefore, learn it uh, very uh, sensibly and very uh, uh, mindfully, and then uh, you will remember it for a long time. Don't buy heart. That's why I wanted you all to ask questions if you don't uh, agree on any concept that that we are going to discuss here. You can always ask questions, uh, or you can even send a SMS or email i will share my uh, i'll share my uh, and the and the email address with you okay so going back to uh, the question I asked, what is the most uh, appropriate market definition of marketing? As I said, uh, well, this is going to be the most appropriate definition for marketing for our study program. The marketing is a management process that identifies, anticipates, and satisfies customer requirements profitably, efficiently, and in a socially acceptable manner. So you have to remember this word by word. So I, I told this uh, last week as well. Uh, marketing is not a just uh, something that is moving on without properly it being managed. So underline, you can underline this in your tutorial or whatever. It's a management process, this is a keyword. And identifies, anticipates and satisfies customer requirements or needs. That's another keyword. The marketing is a management process that identifies, anticipates and satisfies customer requirements or customer needs. Then comes profitably. Remember, we do marketing to earn profit efficiently and when you do your marketing activities or marketing programs it has to be done efficiently it means 
uh, you try to get more outputs with less inputs. You have to be cost effective. That is what is called efficiency. You use a uh, reasonable amount of inputs, but get a huge amount of output uh, from it. That's how you become more efficient and more productive. And also in a socially acceptable manner. Now, uh, this is the CIM definition that was done about uh, 30, 40 years before. Still valid because today, as uh, we learn, you remember last week, uh, now we are talking of marketing as societal marketing. Societal marketing means marketing that has a concern or marketing management that has a concern or that has a uh, that has given importance to the society. So what is society? Society is uh, the place that we live. So that includes the people, the community, and the and what? And also the planet, the universe that we live. Remember that. So society is uh, the society is not only people because people are living in the environment. So environment also is included. So you have to, as a marketer, be mindful about the society and the environment environment if the environment is not good for us to live what will happen we will not be able to live happily the society the people uh, out there is not not very happy or not uh, satisfied then again till have problem so you have to have a concern on the society as well as the environment or the the planet uh, if you are to sustain as businesses. So we need profit, of course, yes, for growth, we need profit. And we have to protect and have a concern on our uh, people. So people include not only customer, remember, people includes everybody who are human beings, from customers to staff to suppliers, agents, distributors, various other groups other citizens of the country, uh, everyone. And then comes to environment, it becomes your water, uh, soil in the planet, the forests, air, greeneries, everything is included in the, in the environment or in the planet. So, so socially acceptable manner uh, is a broad has a broad meaning uh, and broad uh, responsibility being given to a marketer to act in such a way that they are acting in they have to act in a socially acceptable manner so as as uh, uh, as bankers remember we have managed the marketing process to learn and manage the marketing process by identifying, anticipating and satisfying customer requirements in a profitable, efficient and socially acceptable manner. I think I said last week uh, about this anticipation. You know, anticipation is the, the identification of future needs. So we will have to understand uh, not only the current, ne current needs of the customer, but also uh, what he will need maybe in two years time or three years time or five years time you you uh, if you uh, as bankers you uh, if you look look back about five years before our customers wanted uh, uh, no wanted certain limited things but now their are requirements their are expectations have grown in multiples this quality of service they want the prompt service they want us to be very uh, kind friendly efficient uh, capable as bankers give right advice and uh, on the other side they need banking in a you know 
in a uh, uh, in a quick uh, uh, setup. They need online banking. They need uh, digital uh, platforms, especially with the COVID and uh, pandemic situation. The people cannot physically <coughs> move around. So a lot of digital marketing uh, transactions have been taking place. Even the we are you know, limiting the use of money now. We are going getting into digital currency. You know, people don't come to bank. People will have digital documentation. So all these are new things that are anticipated now by customers. So as bankers, we have to. So if you anticipate customer needs uh, before others do, that is an advantage for you because you can uh, do whatever, you can start whatever, uh, whatever measures that should be taken immediately to meet their future needs. So then you give or offer uh, those facilities before any other competitor and then you are at advantage. So marketing help will help you in that way also. So the marketing is not only uh, to satisfy the customer's current needs, but also you want to get ready to satisfy the future needs of the customer. So hope you uh, understand that. Uh, so remember this uh, concept, uh, so remember this definition very uh, strongly that will be uh, very useful for your uh, further studies and then um, another thing i also emphasized last week if you uh, remember our whole manage marketing management process is based on this five five steps you know uh, for that matter, not only marketing management, so first the question is, say even you, uh, in, a, in a business management process also, the same questions can be asked. Now here we are talking of marketing management, it is part of the business. Uh, you ask the questions under, so first what you do is you do a situational analysis call uh, uh, understanding the current situation where are we now so this is very uh, very important so you remember this well so these five steps start with the first question of where are we now and then what are our objectives as an organization as a bank or as a branch where do you want to be in maybe one year, two years, three years, and so on. So your vision, mission, all that will come there. Where do you want to be as an organization or as a branch or as a business? It's a very broad question because you will, you will need to achieve various type of objectives. There may be financial objectives, there may be non-financial objectives. What are the non-financial objectives? Financial objectives, you know, the profits, the growth, lending, uh, deposits, mobilization, deposit growth, fee income, all those are measurable financial, uh, which, are, which, are, which are giving direct financial return, financial benefit to the company that can be measured easily. Then what are the non-financial? Uh, things like uh, customer service, quality, uh, the bank's image, bank's uh, credibility in the area. So these are also very important because bank as a custodian of others' money, a lot of people put their valuables with us, their cash, their gold, their other uh, various valuable things, maybe deeds or, or CR uh, 
uh, vehicle registrations and you know life policies everything that they have kept with us so we are custodian and we have to be credible we have to be uh, they should be they should be uh, we should be trustworthy they should be able to trust us so these are also objectives that we need to look at not only financial non financial customer service image the brand the credibility the trustworthiness believability all that then strategies we uh, uh, come across come across here are in the, in the marketing management uh, there are many strategies which um, which we have to uh, among which we have to select there can be several strategies to get uh, get to our destination for example you now if you you take a normal uh, simple situation you want to uh, uh, you want to uh, say increase your deposit in the in the branch All right so there are so many ways you can increase deposits so what are the starting with first you uh, will have to uh, maybe uh, select the segments that you want to uh, that is uh, segmentation is a key strategy so which sector deposits you want to increase the, your market first the market segmentation is it children deposits or, or elderly seniors or general savings right then uh, what actions you take uh, to focus children's deposits focus on or grow children's deposits maybe your products your campaigns your promotions your personal uh, selling uh, your sponsorships and various or then uh, how do you uh, push general savings again your products will come in your interest rates your promotions everything that will come and uh, the seniors which ways again all those will come so uh are you going to be aggressive in all three segments or uh you want to focus in one segment because you have a uh, you have a limitation of resources so uh, or you want to uh, other side so you want to uh, to uh, various uh, campaigns in a big way or you want to do it in a smaller way you only do some uh, uh, selective program, selective promotions, or so, uh, mass level promotions. Like that, you have, can have dif different ways to achieve your objectives. But uh, based on your resources, your time, how much you can spend on that, uh, the strategy that you use can vary. So uh, strategies, remember, are always are limited by the resources that you have. But given the resources, you use the best and the optimum uh, available strategy that you can implement. Then how do you implement it? As I said, maybe that is how you uh, get into the marketplace. Use your, use your products, your pricing, your uh, uh, customer service uh, activities, uh, all that. So basically, you 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 use your marketing mix to execute your strategies that you have formulated, and then the final action is the the control, the review and control. Uh, okay, we have decided, or we have. Uh, set a target of increasing the deposits by 50% at the branch level within this year, for example. Then uh, within six months, you should have achieved at least 25%. Or so within uh, within three months, you should have achieved about 12.5%. So you periodically monitor whether, uh, according to the timeline, have you achieved or have you uh, been able to uh, 
uh, achieve the the required target uh, or portion of the target applicable for the particular time period or you can divide your target uh, into months say if you want to uh, uh, say uh, 50% increase improvement during the year and at least for a month you must set your 4% growth 4% or 5% minimum growth you must have to achieve 50% by end of the year so like that you can uh, monitor what will happen is if you don't monitor then you don't know until you come to the end of the year if you are not monitored then you see some results that you are not uh, very happy about so hope you are clear with this uh, process this process is going to uh, be our uh, our uh, i would say the the background for the discussion that we are going to have in the in the weeks to come mm. the marketing mix um, i have um, discussed i will do a little more on this uh, marketing uh, mix elements uh, today if i uh, have time uh, you know uh, Originally, uh, people had this four piece of marketing. It's about years before, few years before, because uh, marketing concepts were mainly used for tangible goods. What are the tangible goods? Uh, tangible goods are the goods that can be touched and felt before purchase. Now, for example, uh, as I said the other day, this pen. This is a tangible product. This can be tested before the purchase, whether it is writing, the color, the, the size, the design, everything you can check. So product and the price you will know, right? The place, also you uh, go to supermarket and you buy it. And promotion, maybe you have seen in the papers or seen in, uh, in the internet uh, about this product or through various advertisements in the papers, uh, TV, radio, you would have seen this product or uh, come to know about this product. And uh, so for a tangible product, this is uh, four piece of marketing is sufficient. Then uh, what about uh, a banking service? A banking service uh, or banking is it tangible? Banking service or any service is not a tangible. It's an intangible. You know why? Because uh, you can't test it before you buy it. You can't test. You can feel it. You you can't feel uh, feel the uh, product before you buy it like uh, in case of tangible say for example uh, a customer come to open a open a current account or savings account for example there's a whole lot of uh, things that are that are done uh, because it's sort of ready made you know the customers to open a, uh, to open a current uh, savings account customers to first come to the branch and find uh, application form right and fill it you know, from the point the customer come to the branch, there are many things. The customer meet a lot of people. Uh, customer ha will have uh, uh, disappointments. Customer getting late. Customer is not directed properly. Uh, he, do, he, does, he or she doesn't know where the uh, opening applications are. Then uh, say customer fills that application, then is handed over to a particular person and uh, then that's uh, the person will verify it then there will be uh, cash deposits to be done as initial deposits and then again approval then approving the service account then printing the passbook and there are a lot of activities that that take place around opening a 
service account and handing finally handing over to the customer with the updated demo so you know so this uh, during this process uh, there's a there's a people element there are two three people would have would have come across uh, with the customer customer would have met uh, the point uh, at the entrance as we remember in the last story we uh, learned last uh, week customer come to the uh, come to the lobby and find application somebody may have help or somebody may not have help and customer would have disappointed dissatisfied you know so some people didn't talk to the customer properly uh, some people uh, properly uh, uh, did not welcome the customer uh, some people was not were friendly or uh, pleasant so there can be so so there are a lot of people uh, element uh, involvement is there and also there's a process as i said uh, filling the application approving it deposit of cash updating it and you go to customer there's a process and also uh, the physical evidence is the final uh, element uh, the the customer come to the place the customer what customer see the car park the security people uh, customer lobby uh, staff how they have dressed how they have been looking whether they were looking professional all these are called physical evidence so so therefore uh, uh, for a banking or service oriented transaction uh, those four piece are not sufficient because it goes beyond and there are people involvements there are process involvement and uh, physical evidence physical evidence um, you know especially matter uh, if when you have a good physical evidence customer will have a good feeling good impression now take a situation uh, a restaurant restaurant is well maintained as i said last uh, week uh, very clean very uh, good looking staff are uniformed and uh, very pleasant then it gives a lot of confidence to the customer good uh, customer feel very comfortable to deal with uh, or uh, be in that kind of restaurant so that's how it it uh, it uh, links to service marketing so remember for tangible goods for marketing of tangible goods these four pieces are sufficient because you go to a supermarket and just take it there there won't be any physical or people involvement to buy a tangible product anything you can go to uh, go to uh, any supermarket and buy today but uh, services like banking uh, medical services restaurant or those uh, dining services city haircut again haircut can you buy ready made no you have to go and undergo the haircut so there's uh, the barber the hairdresser involvement become very crucial the people element is very crucial for a haircut service so haircut or, or, or to do with hairdressing or whatever right and the medical operation a doctor's uh, presence is very necessary you can't just go and buy it you have to undergo a medical operation or a surgery so doctor's skills doctor's competency matters a lot the hospital uh, the processes the the technology technological part of the processes will matter a lot the physical evidence the equipments whether they have the modern equipments modern scanners modern uh, theater equipments uh, all these are, are important so so remember the difference so banking coming to banking again so banking is there for a service marketing uh, activity therefore to push business 
uh, as marketers we be using all these seven elements the product price place promotion people physical evidence and so so that's what we uh, learn uh, as key concepts uh, last week right so marketing uh, societal marketing mix i want to get to a um, get to another um, uh, document uh, maybe this is not shared with you know uh, hope you can uh, see this uh, now uh, this is how as i said how the the various marketing management philosophies have evolved from production era to product era the selling marketing and so today we are in a in a in a in a world where businesses will have to think of not only profit but also the other piece what are the three piece that um, today organizations are focusing on people prof the people and planet which is called triple bottom line concept triple bottom line concept so today majority of organizations are focusing on uh, these three bottom line the profit is one the, the bottom line that we have been uh, focusing on throughout then the people then the planet so people i as i said is the society out there uh, and uh, also the planet the environment right now if you look at this uh, as a so what what should we be doing as a as an organization uh, if you are mindful about uh, people supporting human rights champion supply chain uh, fairness quality that means uh, for, uh, be mindful about your suppliers fairness quality externally improve access to clean drinking water stimulate responsible consumer behavior support small scale business improve employee well being promote good health improve employee safety manage nutrition improve society be transparent manage stakeholders promote good self esteem be reliable so all this um, and also uh, uh, also few things like uh, trans uh, clean uh, innovate uh, get feedback do do, do research comply regulations comply industry standards plan for the future process good risk process food responsibly manage the supply chain cooperate do not no harm improve um, uh, for safety be a good uh, cooperative citizen maintain quality <coughs> sponsor events manage cost the things that you will do uh, with regard to planet uh, renewable uh, energy produce reduce emissions protect resources use land responsibly improve transport efficiency <coughs> reduce packaging material reduce uh, so all this uh, the profit that that part you know maintain financial stability increase revenue this i uh, you you go through this slide Uh, which i uh, have which i which i will share with you uh in a while so this is uh, what we should be doing as organizations 
if you are mindful about not only profit but also the planet and the and the people uh you can go through the lot of details in this but uh, to summarize to be a good corporate citizen how to become a good corporate citizen you would have known a lot of organizations now today focus on corporate social responsibility uh, activities to uh, to become a good corporate citizen the organizations will do a lot of corporate or csr activities uh being more efficient there's no question about uh, any organization will have to be efficient be sustainable includes anything that help to maintain longevity of the firm the earth or humanity can include any code that for people bottom line framework so so I, I told you, you know, we have to sustain as an organization uh, if you are to continue to be in business for next 100 years. Uh, do no harm. Harm to what? Maybe do no harm to the society and also the planet. Widely subject to unclear what or whom the goal is not to harm. Can include any codes that present activities that are not to harmful or promote doing no harm to one people the environment any other entity that the firm deems important so should not harm anyone educate educate people about health now all those as organization we have to focus and do then improve society manage stakeholders plan for the future and so on and then also be reliable as organization be transparent champion fairness equity champion supply chain fairness industry comply with industry standards comply with regulations improve employee well-being improve transport uh, efficiency increase revenue increase so there are many activities that uh, come under come under this triple bottom line concept so excuse me yes this uh, tutor has not been shared with us yeah yeah tutor has not been shared we'll do it today uh, sorry about it um, there's a lot of details in that tune, but uh, this is actually part of just just part of this uh, concept of so, uh, societal marketing concept. There are, we are talking about not only one bottom line that is profit, but we talk about a bottom line line in terms of people, in terms of planet, right? And uh, so that's uh, that's about it, and uh, also I want to share with you another uh, slide that uh, wait a minute I will share with you.
Can you hear this? Hello? Hello? We can hear us. Can you all hear? Yes, we can. Right. Now, uh, now let me, uh, yeah, before we, uh, I will check whether this can be. Give me a moment. Uh, Right. Um, before I get into that slide, I must uh, tell you that uh, in the societal marketing concept, uh, I told you there are there are um, there are three bottom line we are talking about. One is profit as one bottom line. And then uh, second, uh, the, the people, and third, the planet. You know, uh, I heard about something called uh, this greenhouse effect. You know, uh, the way our people are uh, polluting the environment, there'll be a day uh, if uh, we don't continue to protect the environment, uh, this universe will be a place that we will not be able to live. It means now, if you continue to pollute our air, uh, the soil, and the water, uh, we won't be able to live because we can't drink water, we can't breathe there, we can't uh, uh, use soil. Now, uh, especially uh, the air pollution is, uh, is something that has been uh, spoken of in the in the world very seriously the amount of uh, pollution that is happening through industrial gases the emission of uh, air from the vehicles uh, the industrial uh, emissions uh, you know uh, breaking of or destroying of forest have all uh, all resulted or uh, been a reason of damaging the composition of air uh, in our planet because uh, if the, the the composition of air uh, is damaged or is uh, is is um, changed what will happen is uh, the the world will be very cold place to live the temperature of the universe will go down if these uh, uh, if we continue to damage the the gases that we have in our universe so like uh, when there are more carbon dioxide there will be more and more uh, so there's an amount certain amount of carbon dioxide that should be there to protect or control the temperature if there are more carbon dioxide there's a lot of heat if there are less carbon dioxide there'll be uh, very a cold temperature so it has to have a balance so if you if you break that balance through our human activities or industrial activities the the universe will be a place that we cannot or we, we will not be able to live in the live in this planet that's what um, uh, this greenhouse concept is uh, talking about so let me share with you that slide uh, it gives uh, uh, some good details of uh, mm. okay now let's uh, uh, Thank you. 
Just remember this. Producing the use of products which are 
efficient appliances, increasing the fuel efficiency of vehicles, using more renewable energy, switch into greener ways, which causes less harm to my heart. That's all for today. I hope you found this session very innovative and you got a thorough knowledge of what really works. If you like our video, you can also buy our courses in the form of DVDs, webinars, and online courses, which are available on different platforms. All links are given. Okay. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that uh, clip. And uh, I will share that also with you uh, in a while. Um, so that's about our responsibility to protect the planet. If you don't, uh, or if you continue to pollute the environment through industrial and other uh, means, what will happen is we will not be able to sustain as a, as a world or as a planet. And this place will not be a suitable place to live for our generations. Okay, so with that, uh, uh, we'll take a break. Our time is one. Two thirty. Uh, shall we meet in uh, ten minutes time? Two forty. Um, hope you can. Um, you are rejoin. All right. Okay, I think you have got a good idea about what is uh, societal marketing uh, 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 is about. Is uh, it's about uh, protecting the planet, concern for people, and uh, also making profit. So uh, three bottom line, people, profit, and planet. Okay, so we'll uh, then uh, get uh, into our next slide, uh, tube number two. Uh, there, as uh, we uh, discussed earlier, we are going to discuss on um, marketing management process. Just asking the question of where are we now? Is the situation analysis about our organization or the business that we are uh, doing at the moment? All right. Uh, Remember, when you uh, want to analyze a situation of a organization or a business, uh, we use this uh, simple model, which is called and family to you as sort analysis. Right? There you you look at the strengths of the organization or the business, the weaknesses, and the opportunities that are. Uh, available in the market and the threats that will uh, be affecting your business. So the strengths and weaknesses are internal things that that uh, where you have a control. So you can in increase on your strengths and you can reduce your weaknesses. But opportunities and threats are more external uncontrollable because uh, opportunities come you don't have a control you can't uh, you can't stop it or you can you can't ignore it but you can ignore it but opportunities will anyway come threats you can't ignore anyway threats will be there so uh, out of the uh, uh, four uh, aspects strengths and weaknesses remember are controllable or more internal and opportunities and threats are external where you don't have a control. Now, if you, uh, uh, so if you want to analyze your current business uh, model or business position, sort analysis is generally used uh, for that exercise, so for that purpose. So it is an easy to use tool for developing an overview of a 
company strategic situation. It forms a basis for matching your company's strategy to its situation. Uh, so it provides an overview of the strategic situation. It provides the raw material to do more extensive internal and external analysis. An opportunity is a chance from chance for the firm growth or progress due to a favorable circumstances in the business environment, possible opportunities, emerging customer needs, quality improvements, expanding global markets, vertical integration. We'll uh, discuss about this, uh, the word in vertical integration in a little while. It is about um, uh, having a bigger control over uh, the, the opportunity to have a bigger control over the uh, business uh, or, or the, the particular business. Mm. Emerging customer needs, quality improvements, expanding global markets. And uh, today now in the today's business context, we have um, another opportunity that has created due to the pandemic situation. There are, you know, even the pandemic situation has created uh, created uh, opportunities for some businesses, right? The pandemic situation has created some opportunities for businesses. But, but remember the opportunities are coming from external, external, uh, as external things. Opportunities will anyway come. So it is the organization's responsibility to capitalize on the opportunities. Now, for example, the, with the pandemic situation, there have been a lot of new digital banking, uh, digital uh, or online banking um, uh, opportunities have image because uh, image because because um, people do not want to have uh, uh, mobility or have human touch and as such you would have seen a lot of online banking uh, models have been becoming very very popular so that has given some opportunity and uh, to many organizations, not only for banks, not especially certain organizations, have home delivery or services have increased in three, four times. I saw an article in the recent times, the singer uh, Sri Lanka has uh, uh, done sales, online sales, uh, six times more than the last year six times 600 percent growth in online sales so if they have say last year they have done 100 billion uh, sorry 1 billion this year they have done during the pandemic period 6 billion sales so like that uh, there are a lot of uh, organizations have got an opportunity uh, new opportunities due to pandemic situation uh, to increase their business in a different platform. Uh, threats is a factor in your company's external environment that poses a danger to its well-being. Possible threats, new entry by competitors, changing demographic, shifting demand, emergence of cheaper technologies, regulatory requirements, and, uh, and so on. And even a uh, pandemic situation can be a threat to the organization. But uh, some companies have uh, been able to convert the threats into opportunities. Now, even um, now, if you take uh, possible threats, new entry by competitors. That uh, so there are many players, new players coming into the uh, market. Especially new in the recent past, there are uh, 
some banks opening branches in uh, certain locations but in the recent uh, maybe last during the pandemic situation this opening of branches would have slowed down changing demographics the income levels and uh, uh, change over the period and some people have got more income while some people had their income uh, going down so excuse me yes sir. Sir, can't see the notes. We we can't see the notes. Oh, you can't see. Sorry, sorry, sir. Yes, sir. Are you okay? Huh? Sorry. Hello. Hello. Okay. No, no, okay, sir. No, okay. No. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Somebody should have told me. I, I would have missed that. Uh, <laughs> sorry about it. Right. Okay. So, uh, with regard to um, what you have been uh, saying, um, the threats can uh, can come in in various forms. Uh, Changing demographics, the income levels can be um, affected due to again the current uh, situation due to pandemic, and um, so demand for certain products would have would have increased, whilst demands for some products would have come down. For example, uh, demand for uh, IT related products have increased uh, in a in a in a big way. Uh, maybe some food items. The demand has increased in a big way, and you know demand for some uh, IT products or IT platforms like uh, the one we, we are using, the Zoom or Microsoft. So those type of uh, businesses have really uh, boomed over the pandemic situation. Emergence of cheaper technologies. Uh, the technology uh, is getting cheaper and cheaper day by day now due to internet and um, other uh, improvements or technological improvements and regulatory requirements now today you know there are you now if you uh, take for the banking industry there have been some import regulations in terms of uh, many uh, imports like uh, you know the vehicles and certain uh, electronics appliances uh, durable goods, uh, building material, uh, some uh, food items, and all those have impacted the business or revenue of certain companies, certain businesses. So this, uh, in this sort uh, analysis exercise, what you do is you try to understand the threats that can come. That opportunities that can emerge as a as a company. Now, if you um, 
look at uh, hmm. so analysis is for a bank uh, if you are doing this exercise for a bank what you can uh, these are the few things that you can look at uh, what are our internal strengths the service quality the high automated systems software expertise easy access to capital and funding solid financial reserves effective sales and sales culture focus on so these are things that you can you can go through and see um, what uh, areas that you can uh, verify in terms of uh, evaluating your strengths what uh, what i've been um, uh, discussing with you all is uh, uh, how to analyze uh, or how to analyze uh, a bank in terms of sort model there first you look at the strengths and this will give you a, give you a guide you now say if you um, if you want to do a, a sort analysis for your bank or your branch you can use uh, all these points and some may be relevant some may not be relevant to your uh, bank uh, doesn't matter but this will give you a, a broader uh, uh, range of pro uh, points for your analysis and weaknesses again i said uh, weaknesses are mostly internal and uh, poor cost efficiencies mixed quality staff targeting price elastic markets no distinct product features and differentiated products so these are common um, common um, weaknesses that uh, we have then uh, come to opportunities uh, leverage on big data develop on uh, customer relationship culture attract new customers through special offers shift to a customer centric uh, market uh, or marketing outlook and so on so these are all um, uh, about opportunities and how to analyze or capitalize on your opportunities the threats becoming a market laggard or a me too player declining unit margins we'll learn on these words uh, as we go a rising fixed cost consumers become more and more sensitive becoming me too player Uh, due to product mix excessive cost of big data inability to grow the customer base long term poor ratings on review websites being perceived as a slow and outdated bank and you know and so on. okay so opportunities and threats from uh, form a basis of external analysis as i said is mostly an external analysis by examining opportunities you can discover untapped markets and new products or technologies or identify potential avenues for diversification by examining threats you can identify unfavorable market shift or change in technology and create a defensive posture aim at preserving your competitive position so what you um, what you do at this uh, situation analysis uh, stage is uh, try to understand all what is around you what as a internal company or the company as internal factors strengths and weaknesses and external factors you have threats and opportunities uh, that are identified now now in order for you to uh, further evaluate uh, the market environment a uh, market environment is uh, generally uh, divided into two broader environments one environment is known as micro environment and uh, is partially controllable macro or external environment is uncontrollable now if you look at our business uh, environment uh, these are the uh, two broader environment micro and macro uh, 
The micro environment includes, uh, which we call task environment, the suppliers, the intermediaries that we have in our business, the customers, the competitors. And then um, internal environment, we have company itself, our staff and uh, management and so on. Then uh, the, mic the macro environment, which is external environment, includes political, economic, demographic, technological, natural and global, uh, and social factors. All right. So remember this um, uh, carefully. Marketing environment includes two major environments. One is micro and the macro. The task environment, internal environment includes, uh, is included by, uh, is um, uh, the ma micro environment is uh, consisted by task uh, and internal environment and macro environment is uh, uh, focusing on political, economic, demographic, technological and um, natural, global, social factors. The actors and forces outside marketing that affect marketing management's ability to build and maintain successful relationship with target customer. So marketing environment is the actors and forces outside marketing that affect marketing management ability to build and maintain successful relationship with target customers. Includes the micro environment includes actors across close to the company. A macro environment in, involves larger societal forces. You know, uh, if you look at uh, the business environment or the, uh, the marketing environment, you have the company then immediately around you you have micro environment that is uh, that is uh, including uh, suppliers intermediaries customers and competitors the beyond that you have uh, the macro environment which is uh, uh, inclusive of political economic demographic technology and you know all these uh, factors have an impact on your business that is what you must understand the political factors can have a positive or negative factors on your business don't you think right the change of political uh, decisions political uh, uh, the various policies of the the politicians or the government can have an impact on your business. The economic uh, policies, again, uh, fiscal and uh, monetary policies of the government can impact on your business. Demographic factors, the income, uh, age, and uh, uh, gender, those factors have an impact on your business. Technology has a huge impact and so on. So let's, uh, uh, let's then um, try to understand how we could do this analysis more uh, comprehensively. Now for that, the organizations will have to do a marketing audit, which we, which we call is an exercise to understand uh, the marketing environment in a comprehensive manner. The marketing audit is a comprehensive, systematic, independent and periodic examination of a company's or businesses, business units, marketing environment, objectives, strategies and activities with a view of determining problem areas and opportunities and recommending a plan of action to improve the company's marketing performance. So when you do a marketing audit, uh, you can analyze the entire organization. So remember the marketing audit is therefore a very comprehensive, systematic, independent and periodic exercise 
of the ma company's marketing environment, objectives, strategies, and all the activities with a view to determining problem areas and opportunities and recommending a plan of action to improve the company's marketing performance. So that means if you, uh, at this stage of analysis, if you do a marketing audit, you'll be able to understand all the issues that are faced by the company in terms of strengths, in terms of weaknesses, in terms of uh, uh, opportunities and threats, the, the objectives of the organization, the strategies, if the strategies are correct or you need to uh, uh, refine the strategies, the actions that you do are effective or you need to uh, further kind of uh, again refine those uh, actions. So basically, this will enable you to review your performance or the effectiveness of your marketing uh, process and then recommend a plan of action to further improve the company's marketing performance. I hope, uh, so, so the marketing audit is therefore an exercise that you do along with the, the SORT analysis. Uh, to understand comprehensively about the company's current position. Right? So, uh, if you uh, go back to the questions that we be asking, the marketing management process, uh, under marketing management process, we have uh, these steps when we do this marketing management exercise, we first ask this question of where are we now? Uh, answer to this question is for the company to do a marketing audit in a comprehensive manner so that the answers to uh, the question of where are we now can be found. The marketing audit uh, it therefore includes uh, about five, about six uh, audits. The first one is the marketing environment audit and the marketing strategy audit, marketing function audit, marketing organization audit, marketing systems audit and marketing productivity audit. So let's uh, do one, take one by one. Uh, so under under macro, as I said, the broad environment uh, to analyze the broad environment, we use a model called PESTEL. I think you are familiar with this PESTEL, uh, which includes political factors which are affecting your company. The here, what you are going to do is ask you some questions with regard to these factors and finding answers, the political factors that are affecting your company, the legal factors or legal policies of the government or the fiscal policies of the government that are affecting your company. Then you come to other, uh, okay, let's go on by one. Uh, so what legal developments are likely nationally or internationally that may affect marketing strategy and tactics. So these are the, uh, some of the questions that you can ask. Which government bodies, local, national or international should be monitored? Because the, the, there are some government bodies, the policies of those government bodies can impact. Say for example, for banking, uh, there are trade, uh, trade uh, ministry, there are certain policies uh, the customs, uh, inland revenue, uh, and central bank. So the government bodies uh, and their various regulations can have a 
impact on your banking business what developments are likely to take place in areas such as product safety product liability labeling uh, so this is under customer protection legislation there can be various uh, things that will impact your business model what changes are likely in the levels of direct and indirect taxation as i said it's in the uh, the in the revenue department that makes the taxation policies our level of political risk likely to increase or decrease so now we have a stable government but sometime before we had a, uh, we had um, uh, instability in terms of political situation our relations with other countries regimes and trading blocks likely to develop and what there are probable implications for marketing you know uh, right now there are issues with regard to our international relations uh with uh, some eu countries or eu rather european union and us you know due to uh, our government is mostly um doing business or more uh trade links with china there are other countries that are especially the us and europe uh have not uh, uh being supporting us that much the so mostly the government is focusing on chinese and indian connections and uh, getting or uh, getting support or, or economic uh, relations with those that has uh, that has uh, not been welcomed by uh, eu and the us uh, as uh, major countries how volatile are trade union practices likely to be in the short term medium and long term trade union issues can impact your business any policies regarding nationalization or privatization likely to change so for now you know these days there's a lot of uh, ah ho going on you know at the uh at the harbor at the you know the uh western side the ports are going to be uh, privatized or not privatized uh, there are a lot of debate going on with regard to this uh, part of the uh, uh, kalambu uh, western side port is to be owned by an indian company and this is become so these are all impacting uh, some of the business models or business organizations in the country and uh, political environment consists of laws government agencies and pressure groups that influence or limit various organizations and individuals in a given society that we have uh, that we have already discussed legislations affecting business worldwide has increased laws protect companies uh, consumers and the interests of society increase emphasis on social responsible actions as i as we discussed in the morning, in the earlier uh, session what is uh, economic and demographic what is likely to happen in the short medium and long term to levels of inflation unemployment the availability of credit and savings you know uh, for banks this uh, unemployment inflation will have major impacts and the the savings will uh, be reduced and the credit growth can be affected in different ways what economic growth rates and income levels are forecast both for the organizations existing and potential markets what changes to the size structure a regional distribution of population likely to occur demographic and demographic environment the study of human population in terms of size density location age gender race occupation and other statistics so you know demographic environment is uh, to do with um, uh, consumer you know buying habits it can impact um, 
the the population uh, age gender basically the how they think can impact uh, our businesses uh, in other words that uh, the customer the consumer behavior may change depending on the age gender and the generations are uh, so changing age structure of us population is the uh, single most important demographic trend uh, like you know uh, generations like baby boomers generation x generation y are the key groups so there's a lot of uh, discussion going on this specific generations uh, in the uh, in the world now starting from you know um, the people uh, who were born before uh, 1945 they are called maturists the so uk population uh, percentage is about 3% attitude towards uh, a career jobs for life they look for life long jobs uh, signature product automobiles communication media formal letters preference when making financial decision face to face no this is uh, the crowd we call today the senior citizens so they are uh, consumer behavior their habits are uh, different to uh, the next generation they are called baby boomers who are born during the period 1945 to 1960 so 33% uh, it consists 33% of the population of uk maybe uh these ratios are uh, similar in most of the countries according as out of their population of uk 33% is baby boomers you know they are uh, they are attitudes towards career changes as as they go generation x generation y now the people children who are born very recently call uh, generation z so they are they are habits of they are more tech savvy they are more uh, you know their communication media is handheld communication devices the cell phones maybe all digital uh, digital uh, uh, platforms they prefer and they don't look at uh, lifetime jobs maybe they are very short term fast track uh, careers so just look at so so we are talking about five generations maturist baby boomers generation x y and z Mm. so generation um, baby boomers generation is so millennial you know so the famous uh, generation is today we call as millennials you now millennials are actually they are similar to generation y which the the the, the people who are born during the period of 19 80 nineteen ninety six what is important here is um, uh, this may not uh, not only applicable for u k but also this uh, generation uh, uh owing to generation uh, particular generation they are buying habits they are thinking patterns they are likes and dislikes their communication platforms the products they like can all be similar around the world 
we have witnessed that in Sri Lanka as well. So it's good to know that um, there are a few generations that uh, that uh, who are in our uh, uh, market. Then ecological uh, ecological uh, factors. What is likely to happen to the cost of cost and availability of the natural resources and energy required by the organization? What contingency plans exist? exist to cope with shortages or sudden prices. Have any concerns been expressed about the organization's role in conservation and pollution? Now that we discuss under this greenhouse uh, gas effect. Now have any concerns been expressed about the organization's role in conservation and pollution? So this fact are also considered and in your analysis this ecological impact we have discussed that a uh, little uh, while ago also you know the if our 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 activities effect the effect human activity or natural phenomenon have on living organisms and their non-living environment so ecological impact so so Various things that we do as in our organizations can have effect on living organism or living beings, and also it has a it have an effect on non-living organism. As I told you in the in the uh, while ago, the due to our various activities at the industrial level, the water, air, soil can be affected. Right. So the greeneries, the the forest, all can be the greeneries. The all can be affected because because the way uh, we 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 do our business uh, has impact on the destruction of the forest. We cut trees and we uh, don't plant trees, and which has again impact on the environment. Uh, in terms of uh, producing oxygen that is essential gas for our living. Greenhouse effect uh, uh, we, uh, we discuss in detail and that slide will be shared with you. So greenhouse effect is a natural process that warms the earth's surface when the sun's energy reaches the Earth's atmosphere, some of it is reflected back to the spa uh, space and rest is absorbed and re radiated by greenhouse gases. The absorbed energy warms the atmosphere and surface of the Earth. So uh, the greenhouse effect uh, balances the temperature in the universe. Now if this effect is uh, affected, what will happen is the planet will be very cold either or very warm. In both cases, we won't be able to live. So rising temperature will cause drought and uh, rising sea level due to uh, ice or glaciers being melted melton glaciers, rising food prices and uh, haze, that is the more heat. Technological, what chances are taking place in the areas of product and process technology? What generic, uh, genetic substitute might replace the organization's product? How well placed is the organization to cope with and or capitalize upon such changes, the technology. You know, the technological impact uh, on our banking sector is huge. You know, uh, day by day, uh, new technologies are introduced and new automation, new, uh, new uh, uh, IT platforms are being 
introduce so this is a vast area that you need to read uh, uh, on this because uh, technology has changed the entire business models over the years of a uh, lot of organizations the products also now most of the product that we had traditionally in the bank have now changed into more technologically uh, advanced product or digitalized product or uh, online products and so on yes i said the is the most dramatic force shaping our destiny <coughs> rapidly changing force which uh, creates many new marketing opportunities but also turns many existing products extinct that means some of our products will die natural death and new products which are technologically uh, supported will emerge social and cultural what changes to consumer lifestyles and values are taking place what attitudinal changes towards business and the product services produced by the organizations are occurring what additional changes are taking place towards such areas as government the media and pollution cultural environment made up of institutions and other forces that affect the society's basic values perceptions preferences and behaviors so cultural environment includes people's view of themselves others organizations society nature and universe this how you think our views so so depending on your analysis uh, you can respond to marketing environment in various ways uh, you know uh, there are three kind of companies they say those who make things happen those who watch things happen and those who wonder what is or what had what has happened so in what um, what would be your company uh, uh, category those who make things happen they are the people who will uh, analyze and take corrective action and make things happen and uh, some companies might just watch what is happening but they have no action or no plan to succeed and those who wonder what happen are the companies that are uh, clueless about what is happening and until a lot of things have happened they are not aware so being this we uh, there are three kinds of companies your company has to be uh, in this category those who make things happen but if you do your uh, yes if you do your exercise of and uh, assessing the market environment properly you will understand the company strengths company weaknesses and you will capitalize on the opportunities and you can minimize the threats that you come across so that way you can succeed as a organization if you don't do that exercise what will happen is you will wonder what is or what has happened because you have no answer to the issues that will be faced with then come to the other uh, uh, set of uh, or other other environment out of so we, we said there are two broad environments one is macro environment that we discuss under pestel model and the second part is the micro or uh, the task environment uh, that we need to analyze so who are the uh, what are the what are the fact uh, what are the actors in this 
uh, environment the company the marketing must consider other part of the organization including finance r and d purchasing operation accounting marketing decision must relate to broader company goals and strategies so so micro environment uh, includes the company and its various functions then the suppliers marketers must watch supply availability and pricing effective partnership relationship management with suppliers is essential then your marketing intermediaries help to promote sell distribute goods like uh, agents and distributors includes resellers physical distributor firms marketing uh, services agencies and financial intermediaries like banks effective partner relationship management is essential then customer there are five type of customer uh, customers consumers there is retail customers the business the reseller the government international and so on competitors conducting competitive analysis is critical for success of the firm you should know your uh, competitors a marketer must monitor its competitors offering to create strategic advantage you should know what others offer especially you now if you have other commercial banks what are they offering in terms of products and services if you don't know that then you cannot work for a suitable action uh, that will create strategic advantage for your organization the public the group that has an actual potential interest or impact on an organization the public the society the there are various the financial groups the media government citizen action groups and so on. the market so what is happening to the size growth growth rate geographical distribution and organizations market so you should know your market the say for a, as a bank what's your uh, what's your market the the population of the country maybe whether the market is growing uh, maybe sri lankan uh, market size is not growing but it's uh the the market share of one company is eaten by a another company that is what is happening that means you are uh, the the market size of the uh the banking sector is not growing much but uh every bank is trying to grab some competitors business so basically they are sharing the cake not uh, the the size of the market is not growing so you are going into others market share and grab it that is how today market has been performing what uh, which major market segments exist how are they likely to grow and which uh, offer the greatest opportunities are now market segments emerging are new market segments emerging are new or different market priorities emerging what scope exists for future market development what changes in usage patterns can be identified or are likely are terms and conditions of sales change actually these these questions are not only relevant to banks it is a common um, uh, set of uh, questions that will uh, be applicable to all a various type of business but there will be some questions that are uh, 
appropriate for the uh, the banking sector i hope you are clear on that the suppliers what changes are taking place in the supplier network and what effect will this have upon balance of power now you know uh, who are our suppliers you now for a bank there are there are different type of suppliers uh, our, our major uh, what is our trading item as bankers our trading item financial hello financial products exactly very good our trading item is the finance the cash money uh, so who who supplies money the depositors uh and the same time there are other suppliers so will be supplementing our business like it suppliers and various other service suppliers but if you take our main uh, trading uh, uh trading stock or trading uh item is the money so we are dealing in money we buy and sell money that's what we do the our major business is that what new sources of supply are emerging uh, what are the objectives and strategies of major suppliers we'll we'll discuss that uh, in a, in a little while what changes are taking place in suppliers patterns of selling that also may not be applicable much for banking but it's a common advertising and pr agencies how effective are the efforts of the organizations advertising and public relations agencies what trends in agency practice are emerging the competition what changes are likely to take place in the structure basis and intensity of competition who are the major competitors currently and in what ways might they change are they any likely are there any li any likely new entrance to the market if so what capabilities and objectives will they have and what are the probable implications for competition you know these days uh, we might not have this new entrance uh, very much coming into because this pandemic situation uh, no new banks are coming into the country and uh, banks are not opening branches uh, but uh, after this pandemic uh, issues are over we will uh, have this uh, new entrance coming into your territory what are the major stress, strengths and weaknesses of each competitor so this basically analysis of your competition in terms of their strengths and weaknesses is good to know uh, what your competitors are capable of and their strategies their objectives and their profitability and so on and uh, what trends can be identified in the patterns of future competition and substitutes for the organization product now you know for a bank uh, there are many now substitutes coming like finance companies leasing companies savings or uh, savings uh, institutions like sanas and uh, there are private uh, pawn in brokers so you have to be mindful about this substitution and they are also coming in in different ways of competition what patterns of product and market development can be identified among competitors are any major changes likely to take place in the patterns of market share does any competitor appear likely to pursue an aggressive share gaining strategy if so how well equipped to do the uh, do this would they be what are the implications for the basis of competition what is the probability of success what is the extent of uh, diversification among each competitor how uh, oh, sorry what internal links uh, does each have what are the patterns of ownership among competitors and what level of resources uh, can reach call upon can each call upon what barriers to entry and exit uh, exit Uh, exist currently in what ways might this you know these are many questions that uh, you have uh, 
that we have gone through. But remember, some of these questions might um, uh, be not fully relevant, but it's good to have uh, answers for these questions at uh, this analysis level. When you ask the question of where are we now, these are the sub questions that you have to find answers. Right? Basically, uh, we did the marketing. Uh, we learn a, learn as to how we could do a marketing audit for the organization that you want to uh, uh, manage. So many questions have been asked in terms of political legal matters and uh, ecological aspects and technological aspects, social and cultural aspects. And then uh, with regard to uh, markets or your target markets, suppliers, advertising side and the PR agencies, public relations agencies, your competition. It's a very, very crucial subject today. And, uh, and um, at this level, you uh, now for macro level analysis, you use a model called PESTEL. So remember, uh, there are two models that we use in this in this uh, exercise uh, to analyze macro factors. You use pestle analysis. That is uh, political, economic, social, technological, ecological, and legal factors. So if you uh, do your exercise in that frame, in that uh, framework, you will cover most of the uh, macro factors that you want to analyze, which will have an impact on the organization. Uh, the Under micro uh, analysis, you use a model called five forces analysis. It will talk about the, the, mac, the, the micro factors, the, the factors that are immediately around uh, the company. So factors that are immediately around companies are the micro factors. Factors which are broadly outside are called the macro factors. So micro and macro, you have to uh, be able to differentiate uh, in terms of that. The five forces are environmental factors that impact on a company's ability to compete in a given market. The purpose of five forces analysis is to diagnose the principal competitive pressures in a market and access how strong and important each one is. So uh, the person uh, known as a famous professor known as Michael Porter uh, introduced this model. So what does the model say? So it's talking about five forces. Of five factors, broader factors. One is the rivalry among existing competitors, that is, among rivalry among our banks. Then, threat of new entrants, he said, and bargaining power of buyers, bargaining power of suppliers, and threat of substitute products. Right. So, what are the uh, what are the um, uh, uh, points under each the threat? Uh, first, starting from rivalry among existing competition, number of competitors,
Yes, the number of competitors, uh, number diversity of competitors, industry concentration, industry growth, quality differences, brand loyalty, barriers to exit, switching cost. Now, uh, for a bank, uh, you, you, you look at these factors in terms of banking industry, number of competitors, diversity of competitors, industry concentration, industry growth, quality differences, and, and then um, threat of new entrants, barriers to entry, economies of scale, brand loyalty, capital requirements, cumulative experience, government policies, access to distribution channels, switching cost. Then bargaining power of suppliers. I said, who are the suppliers here? The depositors. Number of number and size of suppliers, uniqueness of each supplier's product, uh, focal company's ability to substitute. Mm, borrowing powers of buyers. Who are the buyers in a, for a bank? A major buyers are the uh, the the customers who borrow from us, to whom we lend. Number of customers, size of each customer order, difference between competitors, or differences with the competitors, price sensitivity, buyer ability to substitute, buyer's information availability, switching cost, threat of substitute product. That means uh, wh what are the other, uh, who are the other companies that will offer the similar service to customers like finance companies, I said. Finance, and there are many finance companies, there are many leasing companies, which are substituting banking products. Number of substitute products available, buyer pro propensity to substitute, uh, relative price performance of substitute, perceived level of product differentiation, switching cost. Right, so these are, uh, uh, Briefly, the, the uh, points that uh, that we need to analyze uh, when we uh, evaluate the five forces, uh, five forces in terms of our our business. So let's uh, take a break. Uh, I've taken one hour, and quickly this time uh, it will be just ten minutes. And uh, now time is four o'clock. Shall we uh, start at 4.10? Can you hear me? Can you see the... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, very good. Now, um, under, uh, as I said, uh, under uh, micro uh, environment analysis, now we are using this model called five forces model uh, to analyze the environment. Yes. We have uploaded that uh, that PowerPoint document, the video I sent. Uh, uh, I showed you all uh, cannot be uh, shared, but I will uh, send you the link uh, uh, next week so that you can. It's a YouTube actually. You can go to that link and uh, see that uh, video if you uh, like to see. Uh, the PowerPoint document has been shared. You can uh, download it and uh, see. Okay. Um, then uh, this model is very, very important for. Uh, our industry because uh, it covers uh, quite a, a lot of uh, aspects. Now we have threat of new entrants as banks. Um, after pandemic, this uh, will continue. Maybe uh, local banks uh, and local branches and foreign banks uh, were to come. That was stopped due to pandemic situation. So that threat and the competition will continue uh, uh, for us as uh, uh, for commercial banking sector. And, um, you know, bargaining power of suppliers means the depositors. Now, today, depositors, as you know, have uh, uh, 
uh, really disappointed because the banks uh, pay very uh, uh, very very low interest rate not only banks even finance companies pay a very low interest rate and that has really impacted the interest income of especially senior citizens who have put all of their savings of lifetime by way of epf and um, pension funds whatever and they are uh, in a in a uh, lot of uh, difficulty you know, a lot of uh, uh, depositors are now i hear going into various insurance schemes uh, uh, annuity schemes and uh, new money market uh, schemes uh, wealth management schemes and a lot of people uh, have taken money um, from the uh, bank and even from finance companies at the renewal stage and um, that will have impact on uh, some banks um, who don't have sufficient um, supply of funding and uh, that is actually uh, as far as the customers who are suppliers are, uh, who are uh, um, who are the suppliers of uh, deposits but on the other side um, banks also have uh, got funding through other sources like a government or central bank is uh, now providing another various donor funds like asian development bank and um, some other foreign institutions have offered uh, money at a lower rate and you know that is how the banks are now going into uh, very low interest rate um, based loans for working capital and even uh, investment purpose uh, so but but it's, it's very interesting to see how this uh, new changes have now uh, impacted the uh, business models of banks. Uh, one side, uh, now rates are down. Uh, on the other side, uh, money is uh, funding funds are supplied by uh, various agencies to support the economy. The central bank also funding some, uh, uh, make, giving some funds to banks at, at a lower rate. Uh, so, but but uh, as as bankers, we uh, should be knowing this and uh, and take some action to prevent any adverse impact on the on the bank's uh, growth in terms of deposits and lending. Now, uh, you know, uh, with regard to uh, threat of substitutes. Uh, again, as I said, uh, there are many insurance companies have come to the market and they also now accept money. I don't know whether you are aware. They also have various uh, schemes where they accept money and even pay interest plus insurance packages like life insurance and which are very attractive. So uh, uh, this is how uh, right now the industry uh, is uh, moving and um, now customers on the other side have been uh, have been uh, some of the customers have been uh, able to uh, place their money in, in uh, substitute organizations like insurance and uh, other wealth uh, planning uh, products and uh, able to uh, get uh, reasonable interest income out of it and uh, so uh, the threat from the substitute companies uh, will also uh, be there but uh, to overcome such substitute uh, competition the banks also must uh, look at some uh, long term uh, deposit schemes like annuity schemes where the customers get a reasonable amount of money after a few years uh, and so on. So it's interesting uh, for us to analyze uh, our model in terms of this five forces model.
to see uh, what impacts can uh, what impact can uh, adversely affect our business model so let's see uh, in detail um, the supplier are likely to uh, be powerful if supply industry is dominated by a few firms now this is actually this um, this um, uh, these points are valid more than for a bank for other industry this is a common um, uh, set of points that are uh, there this may not be applicable for banks uh, as uh, that much uh, because mostly our suppliers are individuals and uh, there are some corporates also but but um, mostly our banks are funded by individual individual uh, or retail base retail base of deposits uh, but uh, five forces model talks about bargaining power of suppliers for the other industries as well say for a particular industry supplier um, uh, will be very powerful uh, for a uh, in a business if the supplier industry is dominated by a few firms there are not many suppliers Porter said, um, uh, because the buyer cannot choose from many, uh, since there are limited number of supplies. So supply power is definitely it's very high. The supply products have few substitutes. Uh, and supply has some substitute product as well. Buyer is not an important customer to supply. Say if you are a small company, the supply will be dominating because you are a small customer for the supply for example you know um, this happens in especially in uh, uh, situation where say you know take uh, take uh, uh, large companies like lewa brothers now lewa brothers company uh, is uh, very powerful than um, they are distributors so distributors will have to they are the people who are buying from the manufacturing company that is Leo, Leo Brothers. So Leo Brothers will dictate dictate terms to the distributors because distributors have no choice uh, because uh, their product is uh, good and product is uh, brand is very strong and uh, they know Leo Brothers can have any amount of uh, distributors if a particular distributor is not uh, willing to uh, accept uh, Rio Brothers demands. Supplier product is important input to buyers uh, product. So sometimes some uh, suppliers have uh, become very powerful when um, they are what they supply is very critical for the buyers final product save in case of manufacturing. Uh, for example now today uh, manu so say manufacturing of fabric uh, sorry manufacturing of garments fabric become a very uh, very important uh, important input but you know today the fabric uh, fabric is not important from our countries uh, there, there are regulations there are restrictions so local uh, manufacturers of fabric become very powerful because the small garment factories will have to buy from the powerful fabric manufacturers like uh, uh, like Haley's uh, fabric and you know various TJL manufacturing uh, and so on. So they have become very powerful and very profitable because of uh, they are uh, they have become monopoly in the market. And if you take tile business again, the tile, the Sri Lankan tile importation is uh, now uh, uh, is uh, is is uh, controlled or prohibited. As a result, the Lanka tile, so royal ceramic or Lanka wall tile, have become very powerful uh, in the 
in the eyes of the construction business. Now, construction business will have to anyway buy uh, since they don't have foreign stuff coming, since importation is prohibited or restricted. They have to anyway buy from the local tile manufacturers. Suppliers' products are differentiated. Then the supply will have different definite advantage. Supplier products have high switching costs. Say, for example, if uh, uh, it's difficult to change the supply, if, if the supplies change and go to a new supplier, there will be a uh, switching cost. And supply poses credible threat of forward integration. Now, this is um, a new word that you will be learning in a while. Supply poses credible threat of forward integration. So what is forward integration? Forward integration is where the, the manufacturer can or the supplier can become a say, supply of some material can, can become the, the manufacturer. So in, then, then, then if the supply is capable of becoming a manufacturer, uh, then uh, there is a huge threat to the existing manufacturer. For example, uh, so say if you are selling say uh, uh, say milk products, you are a supermarket, and you sub, you buy from a certain say particular farm. Uh, the particular factory from a milk product and uh, that milk product factory can start a supermarket chain then uh, that supermarket which is existing supermarket will have a huge threat that's what he says that there's a credible threat of forward integration uh, then bargaining power of buyers Bias are concentrated. Bias group are likely to be powerful if the bias are concentrated or purchases are large relative to sales sell. So our some of our corporate customers who are who are large customers will dictate terms to us. You know, no. So there are some big companies like say John Keel, Sales and all. They have uh, uh, mass uh, brandings. They dictate terms to banks because they are they are taking very large loans in, in say loan sizes billions and uh, purchase accounts for a significant fraction of supply sales say some corporate customers so corporate uh, lending may be maybe 60 70 percent of the total uh, business say some branches you have one or two corporate customers they are lending portfolios more than 50% of the entire branch lending portfolio and uh, and and also there are there are there are many things like that that makes buyers powerful and then uh, buyer represents a credible threat to backward integration that again uh, say you are uh, say you are selling to somebody and um, but that person uh, will start uh, producing your uh, material. That means, say, uh, uh, say, take a supermarket again, the same story. The supermarket, say, for example, Cargill's. Cargill's is a uh, say, big buyer for. Uh, say ice cream. So Cargill's will go and uh, buy a ice cream plant, ice cream factory, which they did, and uh, they become the manufacturer of ice cream and the and the seller as well. So that's called backward integration. Say uh, what Cargill's did was uh, now you know today we call it Cargill's magic. You know Walls ice cream. Factory was bought by Cargill's earlier. Walls was selling ice cream through Cargill's outlets. 
and what Cargis did was Cargis went and bought Walls ice cream and that uh, that was a huge threat to Walls ice cream and actually Walls ice cream was closed down um, so that's how it happened so which uh, which is called threat of backward integration so I will um, mm, I will explain what what this integration or backward or forward is in a little while threat of substitute products again uh, keys to evaluate substitute products products with improving price performance trade-off relative to present industry product example electronic security system is in place of security guards electronic security system in place of security guards you know now um, security guards um, job is going to be a very much um, uh, extent because there are no security cameras or security systems which are in place so that can increase the number of security guards in, in uh, deployment and fax machines in place of overnight mail delivery now earlier all the letters were delivered physically now not necessary to uh, certain letters now, even now early we sending physical mail now we are sending emails so it has been you now substituted by the no physical mails have been substituted by emails now now they are going to be you know the new development in banking in some countries now are looking at uh, uh, which we call robotic process uh, automation what do you mean that robotic process uh, process automation uh, where uh, some uh, some of our jobs at the bank are being replaced by robots so it's coming under artificial intelligence the so say certain uh, certain work which are monotonous say payment of cash or payment of uh, uh, effecting certain vouchers doing certain calculations uh, all can be automated in such a way that the manpower requirement can be removed and there will be a, a robot type uh, mechanism that will uh, be replaced the the human activity so basically the human work is substituted by robots that's going to happen in a big way as we go on. and another development going to be you know uh, this uh, demand for oil is uh, very soon going to come down a lot because now a lot of countries are going into natural source of power like uh, solar power and uh, wind power and so on uh, and hydropower you know uh, when this energy uh, you now energy is earlier oil was mainly used to generate energy now it's going to be uh, solar hydro and uh, maybe wind power that's going to replace even some countries now going to sell their power generation to other countries in a big way even sri lanka there's a little bit of uh, this uh, be, uh, this uh, concept being driven now a lot of household have been asked uh, to uh, get into solar power and they are given a uh, loan facility to buy solar power system so so that way the power generation uh, can be reduced at the national level mm, it's going to be very uh, cheap uh, energy sources for sri lanka so in other countries more than sri lanka this has become a huge business where the uh, energy is now generated through substitute methods so one side human 
human uh, work is substituted by robots through ai artificial intelligence and other side power uh, uh, energy uh, generation is substituted through uh, various other means you know there are a lot of changes going to take place in the in the world in terms of substitution and which are going to be cost effective which are going to be more efficient and uh, uh, it's very interesting to see how this is going to change the entire business models in our organizations now even even today with, uh, today most of the organizations are now getting into online business the home delivery type or online business home shopping uh, now physical uh, that way now companies have been able to reduce transport uh, cost you know human cost so uh, ex expenditure in, in various ways so one door is closed and there will be new doors open the model is uh, getting uh, change so these are some of the things that you uh, must uh, understand you have to read and understand and uh, rivalry the other factor is rivalry among existing competitors you know that you know the so we have you now today if you take commercial bank there are there are 25 or 26 commercial banks in the country there are 50 odd finance companies and uh, you know there's intensive competition among existing competitors battle of the battle for the strategic position using price competition staging advertising battle and so on so you will understand that also there's existing competition as well There's cut cutthroat competition is more likely to occur when numerous or equally balanced competitors. So that happening in the banking industry because a lot of banks are now equally equally um, uh, capable in terms of technology and various other uh, aspects. Numerous or equally balanced competitors slow growth industry sri lanka is you now slowly growing high fixed cost high storage cost lack of differentiation or switching cost capacity added in large increments diverse competitors and so on. so fifo's model is the framework for analyzing a particular industry yet the five forces affect all other business in that in that industry yes so that five forces will impact you as well as the competitor so um, this uh, words uh, that uh, you come came across in the uh, slides earlier there are there are uh, some interesting words that you must know uh, when you look at uh, this uh, management theories so there are uh, as far as companies are concerned there are certain um, integration concepts uh, integration is where uh, the companies get consolidated. Now you know. Now even today in the banking industry, there we are discussing something called consolidation. You know what it is. Now the central bank has asked small finance companies to get consolidated and become uh, bigger entities. Even commercial banks have asked. They are small uh, subsidiaries, of, which are which are finance companies, to look after them better or merge them with the bank. You know there are finance companies owned by commercial banks in Sri Lanka. There are few. You know commercial bank owns now commercial finance. HNB owns HNB finance. Sampath Bank owns Siapatha finance. Union Bank owns. Uh, union, uh, what do you call uh, union? Uh, uh, yeah, union. 
union finance or something, right? Union, they have a union. Uh, uh, they, have they have a company called union uh, finance, right? So, um, uh, so vertical, so there are two type, type of integrations that we are, that we are, um, that we are talking about. One is vertical, one is horizontal. So there are there are business strategies that companies use to consolidate their position among competitors. Now there are two types. One is vertical, other one is horizontal. So let's see what is uh, vertical. A vertical integration is a competitive strategy by which a company takes complete control of one or more stages in the production or distribution of a product. A company opts to opt for vertical integration to ensure full control over the supply of the raw material to manufacture its products. It may also employ vertical integration to take over the range of distribution or products. So let's see um, um, vertical integration. Now, now this is uh, vertical. Right now, vertical integration can be um, in two forms. One is forward integration or backward integration. Right now, this is what I said. Now, the manufacturing uh, manufacturing uh, business. Say, for example, you uh, you remember that. Uh, 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 Earlier, Kiehl's, you remember Kiehl's was a food manufacturer, Kiehl's meat. Remember that, right? Kiehl's meat, about, about 10 years before, Kiehl's was a meat product manufacturer. We have Kiehl's food. What happened? They went and started a supermarket called uh, K Super or Kiehl's Super. So what, what is called that strategy? It is called forward integration because they are from manufacturing they are getting into distribution after sales service or marketing and that right at the same time uh, so take uh, one example from uh, lanka milk foods right lanka milk foods what they did they had uh, uh, Milk powder manufacturing company, Lanka Milk Foods, and they went and bought several farms, uh, livestock farms like Ambevela, um, because they they went backward and they take over the supplies. It's called backward. Now this is the this is the line that you are starting, right? So so manufacturing business going forward and starting a supermarket or manufacturing business going backward and buying a supplier business now whatever the uh, tea so whatever the plantation so now uh, they were manufacturing whatever the plantation now they are uh, they are getting into whatever the uh, under sunshine, whatever uh, um, brand teas, Sestan and, and and all, right? And um, another example uh, from yeah, there are many examples like that. So uh, some the companies were getting into forward by uh, the say manufacturing company getting in to uh, supermarket uh, or distribution business call forward and manufacturer going back and supply uh, buying a supply company is called uh, the the also uh, no, keel super sorry the kagil super was um, was uh, Was oriented to backward. They went and purchase, purchase um, 
ice cream plant they went backward uh, uh, the ice cream was there one of their supplies you know, it's so uh, there are many examples that you can uh, that you uh, can find in the in the local industry a lot of companies going into this um, integration right? so that is about uh, vertical integration going forward or backward then uh, other integration method is called horizontal integration it is another competitive strategy that companies use and academic definition is that the horizontal integration is the acquisition of business activities that are at the same level of the value chain in similar or different industries in simpler terms horizontal integration is the acquisition of a related business a fast food restaurant chain merging with a similar business in another country or to gain fast food in foreign market you know horizontal integration is uh, is very common in the banking now, you know some um, banking and finance you know in the recent past you would have seen uh, banks like uh, um, not banks actually finance companies orient finance and bartlett finance uh, uh, got merged right got merged and uh, so they, they become orient finance right bartlett finance and orient finance merge and they kept the name orient finance and the recently associated motor finance and uh, arpigo finance became uh, they they got merged and they are going to be one company name associated motor finance and uh, in the recent budget uh, there was a, a, a proposal to merge uh, state mortgage bank and regional development banks and housing development finance corporation together to make a housing bank uh, so there'll be three banks uh, getting uh, merge all these are examples for horizontal integration and uh, you remember uh, nations trust bank went and bought uh, uh, amex credit card company the local operation well well docs mckinsey and uh, that become uh, amex uh, no amex is now owned by amex uh, is now run by in Sri Lankan uh, office is run by Nations Trust Bank. That's a horizontal integration. And uh, there are so you uh, if you look at the market, there are many uh, integration that have taken place uh, vertically and horizontally. So to refresh again, the the vertical integration, um, uh, as we have seen, vertical integration integrates a company with the units supplying new material to it backward, and distribution channel carries uh, products uh, to the end consumers forward uh, integration. And for example, supermarket may acquire control of farms, as I said. So this is what uh, actually uh, happened. Uh, key, um, Food City went and uh, bought Walls, uh, Walls ice cream manufacturing, and uh, Lux Spray went and bought uh, Ambe Villa Farm, like that. And uh, car manufacturer may acquire tie and electrical component factories backward integration. Open is a room, uh, so that can happen, right? So, um, I hope you uh, are clear on these two um, integration uh, concepts. Vertically, when you vertically integrate, it's forward or backward. If you uh, go horizontally, it's uh, mergers and acquisitions, especially horizontal integration is taking place uh, uh, because it's more into relative related business in the banking industry 
banks or oh, there's a there are going to be there are stories that uh, some banks are even getting into merge say like dfcc uh pabc ndb you know there are smaller banks that are um that are uh, but these are stories only but we don't know so sometimes this thing can happen the horizontally they are in the same business they can merge together or big bank can acquire another bank uh, become a uh, two big bank uh, integrating horizontally vertically is going backward to forward so that's um, that's what uh, uh, <coughs> you have uh, seen in uh, this integrating concepts now okay so 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 that will uh, end us uh, end our discussion today and uh, so still we are uh, in the stage of to summarize uh, we are still in the stage of analyzing our current position as a as a market uh, as a market player rather where are we now still we are remember we are in this stage we are still looking at our strengths our weaknesses our opportunities our uh, threats that are there uh, you know if you know you are uh, if you do your sort analysis uh, very carefully you will really be able to assess your company uh, to a deeper level so that will help you to refine or reform certain things uh, as a company to get to a very uh, uh, improved position uh, in the in the future but uh, if you don't do not do this analysis carefully you don't identify the real issues that are uh, impacting your growth or impacting your profitability or impacting your expansion so so in the management uh, or marketing management process understanding your uh, marketing environment the environment that you are operating in what are the strengths what are the weaknesses that you have how do you improve on your uh, weaknesses how do you further strengthen your strengths and how to capitalize on opportunities and how to minimize the impact of threats are the key decisions that you take at uh, this level uh, uh, so uh, so that's uh, what uh, you uh, be having today and uh, if you have any questions or any comments on this you can uh, you know this when the, we, are, we are just going, getting into this uh, online model still um, uh, i am also not feeling very comfortable but still we need to some other manage this it's not like uh, not like seeing uh, each other and then uh, discussing mm. but we'll go on and we'll uh, continue to improve as we go and uh, what you can do is you can sms me if you have any uh, any issues so can uh, email me uh, anything that uh, you want to ask uh, any views my uh, phone number you can uh, i can display it next time but at the moment you can what you can do is you can uh, uh, take down my number is uh, 0777587863 0777587863 email goes as rmp the avance all simple rmp the avance at gmail.com
to repeat again, cell phone is 0777-587-863, email, RAP that one's all simple, RMPDAYA, WANSA at gmail.com. So you um, give your feedback uh, with anything. Be happy to uh, respond or change accordingly. And uh, I shared all the slides that we discussed today, and I will send the link. Uh, of that uh, YouTube also, if you uh, email me uh, your email address to my email, and uh, that's it. So thank you very much for your patience, and uh, we'll meet uh, again next week. Thank you, thank and you. have a good luck.